the MV Delta Saunion, a Greek flag, Greek owned oil tanker carrying approximately 1 million barrels of crude oil, was attacked by Iranian backed Houthi crude vessels. We are aware of a third party uh, that attempted to send two tugs uh, to the, the vessel to help salvage. Uh, but they were warned away uh, by the Houthis uh, and threatened with being attacked. I told you earlier this week how Houthis' attack on a British commercial ship carrying oil had caused huge worry for the U.S. administration and its allies in the West, as suggested by desperate response from none other than Anthony Blinken. You can watch this video here. The Pentagon has now just confirmed precisely that. Addressing media representatives, Pentagon spokesperson Major General Pat Ryder revealed that the ship was, the said British ship was, Delta ship, was carrying a whopping 1 million barrels of crude oil. He said it was on its way to Greece, but there are various reports claiming that this was on its way to Israel. Anyway, coming back to the chaos in the US camp, Pentagon said that the oil was still leaking and America and its so-called powerful allies, so-called powerhouse in global maritime, were finding it increasingly difficult and helpless. He makes two points. First, he calls it a terrorist act. Of course, what, what more can you expect from the Americans? And refuses to accept that Ansarullah fighters, also known as Houthis, were attacking ships in the Red Sea to avenge Israeli genocide in Gaza and occupied West Bank. Of course, he wouldn't accept it since it doesn't suit the American propaganda. Turning to the Red Sea, last week on August 21st, the MV Delta Saunion, a Greek flag, Greek owned oil tanker carrying approximately 1 million barrels of crude oil, was attacked by Iranian backed Houthi crude vessels. As reported by the Greek shipping ministry, the MV Delta Saunion was sailing from Iraq to Greece with a crew of two Russian and 23 Filipino sailors. The crew has since evacuated the ship with the assistance of a partner nation vessel. The MV Delta Saunion now sits immobilized in the Red Sea, where it is currently on fire and appears to be leaking oil, presenting both a navigational hazard and a potential environmental catastrophe. Although the Houthis have claimed that they're conducting these attacks in support of the Palestinian people, their actions prove to the contrary. In fact, these are simply reckless acts of terrorism, which continue to destabilize global and regional commerce, put the lives of innocent civilian mariners at risk, and imperil the vibrant maritime ecosystem in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden, the Houthis' own backyard. U.S. Central Command continues to actively monitor the situation and is coordinating with other maritime partners in the region to determine how best to assist the vessel and mitigate the potential environmental impact. When an AP reporter asked if the US and its allies had tried to contain the situation, Major General Ryder made a spectacular confession that all their efforts, not that they had not tried, all their efforts had turned futile. Not only that, he says that when attempts were made to rescue the ship and tug it away, they were chased away by Houthis. And what's the so-called superpower America doing? According to Major General Ryder, CENTCOM is monitoring the situation. I'm on the, um, the ship in the Red Sea that's on fire, can I um, assume that what you're saying is that at this point, ne neither the U.S. nor any of the other allies have been able to do anything to uh, stop the fire or to do something? actual to address the, the ship's condition right now. Is that accurate? Yeah, thanks, Lita. Uh, as I highlighted, CENTCOM continue to continues to monitor and assess the situation. Uh, we, we are aware of a third party uh, that attempted to send two tugs uh, to the, the vessel to help salvage, uh, but they were warned away uh, by the Houthis uh, and threatened with being attacked, which again demonstrates uh, their blatant disregard uh, for, for not only human life, uh, but all for, also uh, for the potential environmental catastrophe that this presents. So, uh, again, CENTCOM continues to monitor and, and uh, look at you know, and assess the situation, and we'll keep you updated on that front. Did you hear this chap accusing Houthis of showing blatant disregard for human life?
and potential environment catastrophe. Perhaps he's been living in Amazon rainforest, cut off from the rest of the world for the last 10 to 11 months. And that's why he doesn't know about a group of people called Israeli terrorists showing complete disregard to human lives, international laws, and environment in Gaza and the occupied West Bank. Also, perhaps he doesn't know the complicity and active participation of his own criminal government. Bloody hypocrites. These bloodthirsty monsters are not satisfied that they have already damaged quite considerably the global reputation of the US, that they are out to completely destroy the country's image. When will you Americans rise up against these lunatics? Also hear him dodge a question on why the US had not deployed its own warships in the Red Sea. General Ryder, the US doesn't have any naval warships in the Red Sea right now. Do you think that if there had been the USS Cole or other uh, destroyers in or an aircraft carrier in the Red Sea that they could have prevented this Houthi attack on this vessel that's now on fire? Um, well, you know, I, I, at this point, the, the fact is, is that there is a vessel that's on fire. And as you know, we've been uh, patrolling those waterways for a while and have been able to intercept and mitigate the vast majority of, of Houthi attacks. Uh, and so we'll, we'll continue to stay focused on that. Uh, but the reality is right now we have this situation. And so, again, CENTCOM will continue to assess. Um, we'll keep you updated on, on any potential involvement there. And how long do you expect that there won't be an aircraft carrier strike group in the Indo-Pacific? Isn't it risky right now not having an aircraft carrier strike group there? Well, look, you know, as we as we look at global force management and as we look at requirements uh, around the world in support of our national security interests, we're always taking great care to make sure that we can cover those commitments to include uh, in our priority theater, which is the Indo-Pacific region. And so we have a significant amount of capability there. Do you still think America is scared of Houthis? Nah. Meanwhile, the ship continues to be on fire. And these war criminals, Anthony Blinken and Rishi Sunak, had told us in January this year that Houthis will a, face huge consequences and how the Allied forces had already degraded. Hear the word, degraded the military capacity. I'd like to update the House on the action that we took on Thursday night against Houthi military targets in Yemen. Since the 19th of November, Iran-backed Houthis have launched over 25 illegal and unacceptable attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. And on the 9th of January, they mounted a direct attack against British and American warships. They fired on our ships and our sailors. It was the biggest attack on the Royal Navy for decades. And so we acted. We did so in self-defense, consistent with the UN Charter, and to uphold freedom of navigation, as Britain has always done. Yeah. Alongside the United States, with support from Australia, Bahrain, Canada and the Netherlands, we ordered the RAF to strike two Houthi military facilities in Yemen. I want to be clear that these were limited strikes. They were carefully targeted at launch sites for drones and ballistic missiles to, to degrade the Houthis' capacity to make further attacks on international shipping. That's why more than 40 countries joined us in condemning the Houthi actions. That's why other countries have joined us in making clear that if this continues, uh, there are going to be consequences. In reality, seven months later, Houthis have brought the powerful U.S. to its knees. And let's not forget who Houthis are. They are operating out of Yemen, a country that Saudi Arabia completely destroyed with the help of weapons supplied by the criminal West. Anyway, that's it from me. I'm ever so grateful for your support of my journalism and this platform on buymecoffee.com. If you too think that this platform is worth supporting, then you can consider buying me a coffee. In the meantime, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.